Hello everyone! Yo, that's not how I start a video. Let me try this again. Yo, what's popping guys? And welcome back. Uh, not welcome back. Welcome to a tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you um, some... I don't know how I want to describe it. I'm just going to call it advanced clone usage for now. I don't know what I'm going to name this video. But uh, about one or two years ago, I don't know how long it was, I made a tutorial on clone health. How to make different clones have their own health. I don't know how to name that video very well, but it's recently started getting a little popular, so I thought I'd remake it a little bit, make it better, and also show you how to do some more things with it. So, that that's what we're gonna do. So basically, let's start, let's just start with the scratch cat. I'm actually gonna use it. I'm not gonna delete the ugly, fat, disgusting cat that no one loves. Uh, so let's just name, let's just name him, let's just name him Fat, Ugly, Disgusting, Gross. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna call this clone tutorial okay fantastic so what we can do right off the bat is start up and show you how a cloning how, how cloning works uh, so basically <clears throat> we have this underneath this control panel there is a create clone of myself you'll see that there's a drop down here and you can also create clones of other sprites head if you have other sprites you can create clones of those sprites so if I can create another sprite real quick um, you come in here you'll see sprite one you can create clone of a sprite even not in that spikes coding. So it's just something that you can do. <clears throat> so, so you can see that when we set as a clone, we create a clone of my, when we start, you can create a clone of yourself. And then let's just have you go to like zero, zero, just so you can see this. Cause it'll create a clone where the sprite is. That's important to know. So like if the sprites here and you want to create a clone, it'll create a clone on top of this one. So I'm just going to have it go to zero, zero, create a clone, and then I'll have it jump to where it is. So when you press the green flag, you see, this is a clone, this one isn't. I have a clone counter here to show you how many clones there are. In normal Scratch, there are, you can only have 300 clones. And then after that, you can't make any more. So for bigger scale projects, I definitely recommend using Turbo Warp, since Turbo Warp has an unlimited clone amount. But if you're just making some basic stuff, you won't need that. Just make sure you don't go over, over this. If you want this clone counter, use the, uh, the, the add-on called Scratch Add-ons. I have a whole video on that too. You can go find that. So, there, we created a clone, and now this clone can do a whole bunch of stuff, but if you ever press the green, the red, the, oh my goodness, the red stop sign, the clone disappears. Cool, so now you know how cloning works in general, just making a clone. So, say you wanted multiple clones to have multiple health, or multiple different types of health, or just different stuff. Okay, so here's what you could do. So what you want to do is you want to make a sprite, or not a sprite, a variable. We're going to call this clone number okay i'm gonna tick for the sprite only you don't necessarily have to i'm just going to so that it's not in other sprites uh well yeah so you'll set your clone number to zero when the green flag is clicked okay <clears throat> you can feel free to hide your cat your your actual sprite because we're not going to be using the sprite we're going to be using only the clones so the sprite can be hidden and i'll show you how to show clones in a bit <clears throat> start by hiding your cat setting your clone number to zero and then you can repeat however many clones you want. I'm just going to say three. Right? What you'll do is you will change your clone number by one. And you will create a clone of myself. Fantastic. Now you'll also see right above the create a clone, you'll see when I start as a clone. So drag that out. <clears throat> and then you want a condition for each one. So we set the clone number to each, to like each individual one. So it'll set it to one and then create a clone of itself. So what we're gonna do is when it starts to clone, we're gonna check if that clone number is equal to one, right? So here, let's even take this out and let's just have it set like this, just so we can see. So it'll only make one clone, make it one clone. It'll change the clone number by one, setting it to one, and then it'll create a clone. And then when it starts as a clone, this will happen directly afterwards. When it starts as a clone, if the clone number equals one, uh, let's make a variable called clone health and this one you're going to want to tick for this sprite only if it's not for this sprite only it will not work when is when you have a variable that's for this sprite only um every clone of that sprite will have these will have this variable for its own like for itself so this variable will be able to work along every clone you create and they'll all manage this variable in their own way and not interfere with other ones so what we'll do is we will set that clone health to let's say let's say 10 
Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to say, we're going to have you, I think this should work. And then we're just going to have him stay his health. Okay. So, so you know, you see what happens when we click the green flag. You see there's a clone made, but it's not visible. It's because the clone hasn't shown. So when the clone, when you start as a clone, you want to make sure that you press show. The sprite will still hide, but the clone will show. Let's run the game. Yeah, you see, you have a cat here saying his health. <clears throat> now let's integrate more than one. So we're going to put that repeat three back around. And then all we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to do this. I'm going to grab an else statement. We're going to duplicate this in here. Two on the second clone. The second clone that's created will have five health. And the third clone that is created will have a hundred health. And then we're going to place this back underneath just so we can see. And here, I also run this. Uh, we'll have you go to a random position just so they spread out. There. And look at this. Here are your clones. See, we have our first. This is our first clone. You can tell just because that's what we set it to. It has 10 health. The second clone right here, 5 health. And the third clone having 100 health. Now, you see, the reason why they're saying these separate things, even though they're all only saying one variable, is because that variable is for all. Or it is for this sprite only. So they all use this this variable to themselves. They don't share this variable. It, imagine it's like they all have their own clone health variable, even though it's just using one. And that was just that was just by ticking um, this for sprite only. If you were to say for all sprites, you'd have a different issue. So if it's for all sprites, they're all gonna say the last one because that's the last one that it was, right? And it's not going to work. Because then if you lower this number, it's going to lower all of them at the same time. So that's why you want this for this sprite only. So that it actually works out. And does what it needs to do. So there you go. Now you can give every single clone its own assigned number. And again, you could have more of these too. Like if you wanted um, to keep track of a clone damage, right? You need to set that for this sprite only too and say clone damage this one does one damage this one does 10 damage this one does 30 damage and then instead they'd say clone health um and then they'd also say uh the clone damage right and then you run it boom now they're saying their clone health and their clone damage and you can have all these different stats that you want. You just have to keep setting it up like that. So, now let's say you wanted to keep track of this clone's position and where it is. That's a little bit of a different one, but it's still fairly easy. We're going to make a list. We're going to call this list clone coordin coordinates. Okay? And just make sure that you do it for this sprite only. Just like how the variables work. This will keep track of their coordinates. And again, it's like they're, sh it's, they're not going to be sharing this list. It's like they're all going to have their own list by only creating one. Same way the variables worked. It's just a list. And in theory, you could put all these numbers into this list too. But I'll get to that in a second. So you want to keep track of their coordinates. So think about what their coordinates are. The coordinates are their X and their Y, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to just move this. When we start as a clone, we're going to start by deleting all of the clone coordinates. And then we are going to add nothing to clone coordinates twice. So we just put a repeat and two. What this is going to do is this is going to, if you were to show this list, it just add two blank slots to the list. And again, every clone would have their own type of this, right? Fantastic. So it's going to add two of those. You put this back on. And then down here, I'm going to take this out for the time being. And what you're going to do is you're going to grab this replace item block. Replace item one of clone coordinates. Remember, because there was two, we created two empty slots. It's going to replace the first one with your, with your clone's X position. We're just going to duplicate that and replace the second empty slot with its Y position. And then we will just have them say the clone coordinates. Because right, the clone coordinates will read off whatever is in the list. And so now if we create, if we show this, see they're all saying their, their current coordinates. If I move this, the coordinates are changing. 
all of their coordinates are changing. Very, very nice. Works super well at keeping track of all this stuff. Yeah, it's fantastic. What can I say? I really like it. So here, let's say we did this just to make sure that this is actually working. What we'll do is we'll for uh, so we'll have it. Let's just have them turn in a random degree at the beginning, just so I can show this off. Have them go from 10 to say 50 degrees. They'll just turn randomly, and then uh, they'll forever move three steps. And then if they're on the edge, they bounce. Okay. Let's take a look at this and watch the coordinate numbers change. Look at this. You can see their coordinates are keeping track of themselves. And don't worry about these big decimals. It's just a more on-spot point of where it is, right? So if you really wanted to change that a little bit, what you could do is you could come to your Operators tab and you could just grab this round block or this round. I'm just going to call it a bubble. Put that in there and it and it, and it round it to a closer number. See? And then it just rounds it to the actual numbers. And look at that. They are all keeping track of their coordinates. That first number is their X position and the second number is their Y position. And there you go. You're keeping track of your uh, clones locations. So now I said before that you could um, keep track of their health and damage in this list too. And this is helping for a little bit more optimization and compressing all this code. So what can we do for that? Well, let's start by saying we want more things in the list so the first two are going to be assigned as their x and y we'll have a third one for their health and a fourth one for their damage so we need four empty slots so now what you can do here is instead of these variables let's just remake each of these right so instead of setting your clone health to 10 we'll replace item 3 which in the list we decided that 3 was going to be our health since 1 is our x 2 is our y 3 is our health so we'll set three of the clone coordinates and you get anything if you wanted to you could rename this list to like clone info with and we said 10 and let's make another one here a clone damage we decided was the fourth slot and it's one put these together and that does it for us five and ten replace this say five and ten 130 set these 100 and 30 just like this by the way you don't need this extra one open this is just if you're gonna add more clones if anything you just close that off if you only plan on having three clones and there you go and it's saying gonna say your clone info so let's take a look look at that they are saying their coordinates and also saying their health and their damage so there's a bunch of stuff you can do with this so say like here I can make this a little bit more obvious about what these things are right I can make these a bit more obvious by just deciding so let's open up the list and take a look at it so we have four slots currently say we wanted like we wanted this to say X put this as Y I'd right, say this is health this is damage so it'd be an easier way to see what each clone has. So all we need to do here is we would add that first thing that we wanted, which is which we said what was was X, right? So I'm gonna put a space there, and then we'll add a nothing for this blank. We're just gonna copy what we wrote right here, right? So Y health. And the last one was damage. Okay, and then just slap that on. And you see all I did here was remake what we already wrote in this list. Let's hide that list. Save. And boom. Now it's a little bit of a different way to see what's going on. I see we added this oddly. The have clone info add. Boo, 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 boo. Ah, that's what's going on. Okay, we have to actually change these. So you see item three is now this Y. So, um, what we need is, so, health, our new slot is, if we look here, is the number six. So we change this to six, and then damage, 
would be eight because it's the one beneath damage. So it'd be eight. That's a seven. So six and eight, six and eight. And then clone info, these is now two. X is now our two because it's right beneath this. Y is now four. Again, this is just so you could, this is just a better visualization of what we're looking at. Let's take a look. And boom, there we go. Showing you all this information now. And it's in a little bit of a way you can see it and understand what each thing is a little bit better. But look at that. Look at that. Telling you a whole bunch of information. And you can make these lists really long because a list can hold 20, uh, I think it's 200,000 things in it. 200,000 200, different um, lines in a list. And again, if that's still not enough for you, which I don't know how big of a game you're making, but let's say 200,000 isn't enough. Again, Turbo Warp has an infinite list length, so you could use that and do as much as you wanted with it. So boom, now that you did that, you have no use for this clone health and close damage variable because you got this. And there you go. Some pretty advanced clones right here. I think so, at least. So, that's a pretty basic understanding of advanced clone usage or whatever i'm going to call it so i hope you enjoyed hope you found this useful hope you can use this for your game and yeah i'm gonna leave the episode here not the episode the video here so thank you all so much for watching if you liked it then like it if you didn't like it like it anyways because hopefully you guys can make some cool new interesting games with this mechanic while you're at it why not subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content that helped me out a lot but thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one peace I'm <laughs> a